Off and on for nearly three years, two little birds have made the evening news here in Chicago. Yeah, they've made the news a lot. Mm -hmm. WGN's Aaron Ivory is here with how these piping plovers or plovers are still making headlines mm -hmm. far from the shoreline of Chicago. I Hello. wanted to give you Sally seashells by the seashore there. Huh. Oh, yes. <laughs> that work for you, Lourdes? <laughs> I got it. Well, they might just be the most recognized shorebirds in the country, known as Monty and Rose. And while they are no longer with us, as Ben pointed out, the city's fascination with those two small birds and now their offspring continues to be a rallying cry for all birds who got a call Chicago's lakefront home. Birds have really changed my life. Specifically, two birds that weigh an ounce apiece, Monty and Rose. Uh, they have completely rearranged my priorities. It's Hers like, and Bob Dolgan's. I've created a, another film about birding called... Who swapped Bob. sports writing for filmmaking about two birds making a nest on the sandy shores of Montrose Point. With Monty and Rose in particular, there was something really unique about how rare they really are as Great Lakes piping plovers. <laughs> In fact, there are only about 70 pairs of these small shorebirds left in the entire region. They're really struggling to adapt to our very altered environment. When they arrived, it was like, we have to be part of this. They're, they're nesting here. Within a month, the nest was under full volunteer surveillance by bird lovers like Anne and her son Stosh. The birds making not only headlines, but the fronts of t-shirts and beer cans. And Dolgan's first film sold out six nights in a row. And people all kind of rallied around. And pretty soon, by our second year of doing this, it's like Monty and Rose started to become famous in Chicago. People would just show up and say, you know, is Monty and Rose here? Their presence, along with their three marshmallows with legs, carried enough weight that even a giant music festival was moved from the beach to protect the nest. Uh, if you can make a personal connection in nature, you care about it more. So exciting! Monty and Rose went on to raise several more chicks for two more summers. By April 2022, their imminent return was the talk of the town. It was WGN's own crew that captured Monty the day he came back to the beach. Now the big question, when will Rose arrive to meet up with her partner? For weeks, Monty waited and waited for Rose, but she never returned. That May, Monty died from an infection. When Monty died, you know, we were just distraught. It was like, all this work is now at an end. But then Imani, one of their chicks from 2021, shows up at the beach. Imani, one of Rose and Monty's offspring, had traveled over a thousand miles from his southern wintering grounds to return to Montrose Beach. This habitat worked. It's, you know, it's field of dreams type stuff. You build it, they come. Dolgan has permanently traded sports stats for a bird scope, leading other bird enthusiasts down nature trails to spot and count birds. Oh, there are a couple flying out of here. You know, if we aren't preserving habitat, and paying attention, they could very easily just fall by the wayside. In the end, it didn't take an ornithology degree to open her eyes. Wagtails are cool. Um, it was everyday people like Dolgan, Anne, Stosh, and hundreds of others who discovered a soft spot for two little birds. It is extraordinary how much little actions actually matter. And if only a few people can do that, you know, once you expand that reach to a few hundred, a few thousand, tens of thousands, then you, the rewards will also grow with that in terms of conservation. Their work has expanded Montrose Point's protected areas with volunteers continuing to monitor plover activity. I think that's something that you know the city should be really proud of because other communities are asking us for our playbook. A huge win, according to a former sports writer. If it can be done here on our most crowded beach in the city, it really can be done almost anywhere. And Bob Dolgan is back behind the camera again, wrapping up his fourth bird film called Floodles, which is slated to come out by the end of the year. So I'll put a link to that along with this story. And you guys, you're teasing me because you know I'm not a bird person. I've right. got a little bit of a bird phobia going yes. on. So this was a stretch, but it did open my eyes to a lot of things. And the beauty. And as you said, and just the taking the time to take it all in. And a lot of bird names I will never be able to pronounce. <laughs>
<laughs> well, not it, on took TV us anyway. two, it took us two or three years of covering Monty and Rose to figure out it was piping plover, not plover. So. Right, well, whatever. Plover, plover, plover. Yeah, they're here and they may still say plover. So yes. Cool. Okay. Yeah. And their kids are still flying <laughs> in. Thank All you. Right, Aaron. Aaron, thank